Welcome to Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring. Um, in this podcast, we'll look at first method of solving quadratic equations. You've done this before in previous courses, so this is more of a review. One thing I do want to remind you is this. When you are solving quadratic equations by factoring, you are using something called the zero product theorem. The zero product theorem says if you multiply two numbers, a times b, and you get zero, that can only happen if a is zero or b is zero. If two numbers multiply together to give you zero, at least one of them must be zero. Now with that in mind, let's go to our first example which says solve 2x times 3x plus 5 equals zero. Well, 2x is a number. 3x plus 5 is a number, so there's the product of two numbers that give us 0. This number times this number. So the zero product theorem says that either the first number, 2x is 0, or the second number, 3x plus 5 is 0. Now we can get the solutions to the problems by simply solving these last two equations for x. Here if I divide both sides by 2, on the left the 2's cancel, that leaves me x. 0 over 2 is 0, so I get my first solution. x is 0. On the other side, I subtract 5 from both sides. I get 3x equals negative 5. I divide both sides by 3. And I get the second solution, x is equal to negative 5 thirds. Now, that was kind of an easy problem to do because we were given a zero on the right, just like in the zero product theorem, there's a zero on the right, and we were given a product on the left, just like in the zero product theorem, a product on the left. So this was set up for the zero product theorem. Usually that doesn't happen. Usually you've got to make your zero and make your product. So let's say that we get a problem that says solve this equation by factoring. Might tell you to factor, if not, you look at that, you see three terms, you think, well, I can maybe factor that. Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to get this in the form of the zero product theorem. That is, we have to have a zero on one side and a product on the other. I'm going to make my zero on the right because I like my highest power term to be positive. If I move the 12x cubed to the left, it'll be negative. So I'm going to move the other two terms to the right. So I'll have 12x cubed minus 22x squared minus 20x equals zero. And I've done part of what I've had to do. I've got to make a zero on one side. There it is. Now I've got to make a product on the other side, and making a product is called factoring. Now factoring is a skill all in itself. If you've forgotten how to factor, you need to get to the math lab or go to a podcast on factoring. And there's plenty of those on the internet. Just get on the internet, type in factoring, and there'll be plenty of stuff there to show you how to factor. Okay, let's move on here. We're going to factor this thing, and when you're factoring, the first thing you want to do is look for common factors. I see a 2 and a x in this first term, a 2 and a x in the second term, and a 2 and the x in the third term. In fact, in the third term, I see a 4 and an x, but there's no 4 in the second term. So 2x, I think, is going to be my biggest common factor. So I pull out the 2x. This is called taking out common factors first. And I've taken it out correctly if, when I multiply it back, I get exactly what I started with. So if I did 2x times 6x squared, that would give me my 12x cubed. So that part's right. If I did 2x times negative 11x, I'd get negative 22x squared. So that part's right. If I did 2x times negative 10, I'd get negative 20x. So I have taken that out correctly. Now the second thing I have to do is I have to see if this big animal here is factorable. So I'll write this as 2x, and I'm not sure if this is factorable, how it'll factor, but let me just take some guesses here. One way to get 6x squared is 3x times 2x. And if it does start 3x times 2x, I know the center signs are different because the 
uh, trinomial ends in a negative. The only way for that to happen is to have a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive. Now it's a 10 and I need an 11 in the middle. So let's see. If I put a 5 here and a 2 here, then my outside product would be negative 15x. My inside product would be positive 4x. So that's negative 11x. So that would work for me. So now I've done what I needed to do. I've got a 0 on the right and I've got a product on the left. This time instead of a product of two terms, it's a product, I mean two factors, it's a product of three factors. However, the zero product theorem works just the same. If three numbers multiply together to give you zero, and here are my three numbers. If three numbers multiply together to give me zero, then either the first number is zero, or the second number is zero, or the third number is zero. Well, if 2x is zero, the only way that could happen is for x to be zero. That's the zero product theorem. Here you have the product of two numbers equals zero. So either the first one is zero, well it's not, it's a two, or the second one is zero, so the second one has to be zero. When I go to this second one, if I subtract 2 from both sides, I get 3x equals negative 2, x equals negative 2 thirds. There's my second answer. If I go to the third one, I get 2x equals 5, x equals 5 halves. So this particular problem had three solutions, and notice its degree was 3 also. That's more than a coincidence. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Here's a problem that pops up on tests a lot, and it, there's kind of a temptation to a quickie way to work it. You'll see a lot of times on tests, if you ever grade tests, that when you give a problem like this, the student wants to do this. Divide both sides by x. Then you end up with x squared equals 25, and the student typically will say x equals 5. If they're particularly alert, they'll notice that negative 5 would also work, because if I square negative 5, I still get 25, so they might say 5 or negative 5. But let's say that we work this by the zero product theorem, which is the way that we should be working it. If we're going to work it by the zero product theorem, then just like in the first problem and just like in the second problem, we need a zero on one side and a product on the other. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a zero on the right side by taking 25x from both sides. So I get x cubed minus 25x equals zero. Now the next thing I need to do is make a product on my left side, and you make products by factoring. That's what factoring means. It means to make a product. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for common factors, and I see that both terms have an x. So I take an x out. And again, I've taken it out correctly if, when I multiply back, I have what I started with. So if I do x times x squared, I get x cubed, so that part's right. If I do x times negative 25, I get negative 25x, so that part's right. Now notice that this second factor on the left is a difference of squares. x squared is a square, 25 is a square, and the minus is a difference. Now a difference of squares always factors always into a product of conjugates. So I write x minus 5 times its conjugate x plus 5 equals 0. And notice that that works. When you multiply the first terms you get x squared. When you multiply the last terms you get negative 25. When you go to do the inside and outside for the middle product, the outside product is positive 5x, the inside product is negative 5x, and when you add them up, that gives you a center term of 0, and we had no center term, so that is correct. Now we apply the zero product theorem. That tells us either x is 0, well that would be a solution right there, or it tells us x is 5, or x is negative 5. Now notice that when we took the shortcut quickie way, we probably just ended up with the one answer, x equals 5. If we were particularly clever, we might end up with 5 and negative 5. But when we do it correctly by the zero product theorem, we end up with three answers, 0, 5, and negative 5. 
And again, that corresponds to that doggone power of X, B, and 3. And that concludes this podcast. <laughs>